In this video, we learn how to sketch the inverse function given the curve of f of x. And to do that, we're going to work through the example that we see here. We're told on the xy grid shown here, so that's what we see, sketch the curve of the inverse function y equals to inverse f of x. To do that, there are two important things to remember. And so I'll just write remember here in capital letters. The first thing to remember is that the curve of y equals to f of x and the curve of its inverse, so y equals to inverse of f of x, are the mirror images of each other across the line y equals to x. So let me just write that. They are the mirror images of each other across the line y equals to x. The second important thing to remember is that if y equals to f of x passes through a point, passes through a point with coordinates, say, a and b, then its inverse function, so the curve y equals to the inverse of f of x, will pass through the point with coordinates b, a. So I'll just write, will pass through b, a. Okay, so those are the two important things to remember. Firstly, a function and its inverse are the mirror images of each other across the line y equals to x. And secondly, if f of x passes through a point with coordinates a, b, then its inverse function has to pass through the point with coordinates b, a. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and see how to sketch the inverse function for the curve we have here. Well, to get us started, I'll draw the line y equals to x on this x, y grid. And that's the line passing through the origin whose gradient is 1. So it will pass through this point here, this point here, this point here, and so on. So let me quickly draw that. There we go. That's the line y equals to x. And since the curve of the inverse function will be the mirror image of the blue curve we see here across this y equals to x, we can already tell that it's going to look something like this, what I'm hovering over right now. But thanks to the second point we wrote down here, we're going to be able to sketch it as accurately as possible. And to use this, let's pick up on the coordinates of a few of the key points we see on the blue curve. The first of which would be the starting point right here. Now, it has coordinates negative 3, negative 6. And I'll just write that. That end point there has coordinates negative 3, negative 6. And so what we wrote here is telling us is that because f of x passes through the point negative 3, negative 6, its inverse function will have to pass through the point negative 6, negative 3, which would be the point right here. And in fact, I'll label that. That's negative 6, negative 3. Next, moving along the curve, we pick up on the y-intercept here. And looking at this, we can see that the curve crosses the y-axis at the point with coordinates 0, negative 5. Consequently, the inverse function will pass through the point with coordinates negative 5, 0. So that's right here. And I'll label that as well. That's negative 5, 0. I carry on, and the next point I pick up on is this one right here, where the blue curve crosses the x-axis. And looking at this, we can see that it crosses the x-axis when x equals to 4, so that's the point with coordinates 4, 0. The inverse function will therefore pass through the point with coordinates 0, 4, which would be on the y-axis and would be right here. And I'll label that as well, that's 0, 4. Finally, the last point I'd pick up on here is the point at which the blue curve crosses this line y equals to x. Whenever f of x crosses that line, the inverse function will cross the line at the same point. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 points to work with, as well as the fact that the curve we're trying to sketch has to be the mirror image of the blue curve across this green line here. And so if I sketch that, it would look something like this. And there we go. That's the curve of the inverse function of f of x. And before I finish, it's worth pointing out that because of this second important rule I wrote down here, in which the x and the y coordinates are swapped between a function and its inverse, it means that the y-intercept of the original function turns into the x-intercept on the inverse function, and that the x-intercept on the original function turns into the y-intercept of the inverse function. And that will always be the case. So do keep that in mind. 
And there we go, that's it for this example on how to sketch a function's inverse function.